Hello and welcome to the 2022 African Nations Cup Grand Final of the men's between South Sudan and Kenya. About to get underway here at Ralph Reserve, the home of Western Suburbs Football Club in Sunshine West. Will be a new champion. Neither of these teams have won the title before. South Sudan always heavily fancied. Team Kenya have breezed through the group stages and their semi-final against Djibouti to take their place here today and will prove formidable opposition, I'm sure. I'm Josh Parrish for FNR Football Nation Radio and for Football Empowerment. And alongside me today is Lockie Flanagan. Lockie, pretty excited for this match to get underway. Well, I think the only thing to really communicate the, the emotions that I'm feeling and that everyone else is feeling is just to look out at the scenes in front of you. You can see them on the camera, on the live pictures at the moment. There's a whole stand on this side of Ralph Reserve, and yet still sprawling fans all the way on the opposite fence. You know, it was a very, very hot day today, but you wouldn't know it from the, uh, the turnout for this massive game. As you said, Josh, two teams who have yet to take out this tournament ever before, and uh, none feel that burden more, I would say, than South Sudan. The, the perennial favourites, but equally perennial underachievers. I think the pressure is certainly on them today. Well, it's Team Kenya in the purple, kicking from right to left. South Sudan in their distinctive dark green, and blue and red sash. Ruben Manyang, at the outside of the boot, lofting that one forwards. And goalkeeper Guy Anyang of Kenya, gathering comfortably. Two best teams in the tournament going head to head. This one will be hotly contested, I'm sure. Godfrey Okello under pressure here from Dut Deo and from Chol Gabriel, scorer of two goals in that semi final procession against Djibouti, it turned into. South Sudan did it the hard way, getting through to the final. They were down 2-1 at half-time against Botswana, despite their goalkeeper opening the scoring, Lockie. Truly ridiculous game. They regained their confidence after a brilliant free kick from Chok Dao got them level and rode out the game. 4-2 winners, thanks to goals from Sabit James and Apai Akuno. Well, I, think, I think the wonder of this is that it's very rare that a goalkeeper scores in the game, right, Josh? We know that. It's even rarer that the goalkeeper scores and then isn't in the next match. What did he do? Was, was the scoring for, as a goalkeeper too egregious? Is that what happened? But no, no Mayan Mayan today. Santo Agwek in the goals for South Sudan. It's quite a, quite a thing to be uh, thrown in and to uh, the starting spot in a final. Well, I think he may have played earlier in the tournament, Lockie, but... Here is a big chance, Apaya Kuno steaming in, Guyan Yang gets there first for Kenya. Not only did Mayan Mayan score in his semi-final appearance, he also saved a penalty at the end of the game. It's true. So, stellar effort, perhaps he was unavailable to go between the sticks today because he wasn't the starting goalkeeper before that match, he certainly played his way into that spot over the course of the 90 minutes. Santo Agwek between the sticks for South Sudan today though. In with velocity, T a difficult chance for the defender to clear. And it's into the grateful arms of Guy Anyang. As Masakwe contested that ball, really awkward spot to defend, so close to his own goal. And big chance, huge chance going big for Masakwe there. From all reports, he's been a 
the standout player for South Sudan so far. You'd expect him to bury that one. Perhaps, though, he might have been preferring it fall to a, a Payakuno. Here's Kenya. Joel Gabriel threading it through. Pakoyo Manyang! Kenya have the lead in the African Nations Cup final. And it's Pakoyo Manyang with the goal. Threaded through in the blink of an eye and a calm finish past Santo Aguac to give the team in purple a one goal lead. And this grand final is started with a bang. The celebration says it all, Josh, doesn't it? A convergence of Kenyan players on top of one another. They know how much that goal means and how pivotal it could be to deciding this final. And I think the fans who are streaming all the way down the, the, close, the broadcast side of Ralph Reserve know it too. What a start for Kenya. They just had a close shave before when Masakwe nearly put the ball into the back of the net for South Sudan, but no sooner had that chance died down, Kenya took the ball up the other end of the field and Poko Manyang providing the finish. He was the playmaker in the semi-final. He's turned goal scorer in the final, Pakoyo Manyang. Picked on by Boltong. Godfrey Akello not giving Manyang an inch that time. It'll be a Kenya throw. And the favourites for the tournament go behind early on. They never make it easy for themselves, South Sudan. It's always dramatic when they're involved, it seems. But they've fought their way back from deficits before. And they have a corner now. Payakuno up front, the obvious target. Defenders up from the back as well. Big frame of Amanhom Karmas in there as well, the number four. Swung in by Quay into the back post. That was Alun Kang, who played no part in the semi final, heading it away and giving his teammates a bit of a lecture about their man marking. Nelson Salvatore. Akello fouled surely and Joel Gabriel won't get away with that one. Interesting. The tape on the back of the neck of Godfrey Akello. Not sure if it's injury related tape, I'm not sure. way onus is on South Sudan to grab an equalizer as soon as they possibly can. Chance here for Maso Kway, last ditch challenge flying in. It was Mato Dong centre back timing it perfectly and he had to. South Sudan applying all the pressure after going 1-0 down. Keeper comes and doesn't collect. Loose ball and a goal! And it's the centre-back who scores it. Amanong Kamis up from the back to apply the finishing touches. And it's South Sudan, Ken won, Kenya won already. We were just talking about it, Josh. The instant reply delivered by Aman Hom Kamis. He wasn't expecting it to fall to him necessarily, but Guyan Young, a costly error, allowing that ball to spill in the penalty area. It's a cardinal sin if you're a goalkeeper, and unfortunately, Guyan Young is the man who committed it. But South Sudan will not care. They're quickly back into this game, well and truly at one apiece. Joel Gabriel Manyang 
Thomas comes across to clear that one as well. Now Kenya with the ball, trying to work an opening. Paul Tong is quick, but completely wrong-footed by the pass. There's a well-intentioned ball in behind, just uh, two players who weren't necessarily on the same wavelength. And the pace they have up front, Kenya, is their big asset. Well, it already kind of seems, I know it's still early doors or inside the first 10 minutes, but it does already seem to be settling into that kind of rhythm. You mentioned the pace that Kenya have got in behind, and it has been on the counter-attack where they've been at their most threatening, and they're trying to hit in transition here again. The ball just with a little bit too much weight on at that time. The whole complexion of this Kenyan midfield has been changed by an unfortunate injury. I don't believe he's on the team sheet today. But Bernard holding midfielder of Kenya was taken out by a two-footed scything challenge in the second half of that semi-final when the game was already effectively over. It had to be carried off the pitch. And he was the player who was always holding off defenders, presenting for the ball to his feet, controlling the tempo. Without him, Kenya have to play a much different way. Manyang. Shoal can't get there. Salvatore. Plays that same tempo controlling role for South Sudan, but it's been hammer and tongs, end to end stuff so far. It really has. I think the crowd certainly feeding the chaotic, and frenetic energy of this game so far. You mentioned that unfortunate injury to Bernard in the semi final. Uh, there were a few players that we saw in the Kenyan lineup. As the keeper comes out here, he's managed to claim it, but not without some personal cost to himself. Coming together between Santo Agwek and Boltong. He's left both feeling a little bit ginger, but the South Sudanese goalkeeper, perhaps most of all, he was, had a bit of hesitancy as to whether he should come out for the ball. Boltong certainly wasn't feeling that same kind of indecision. He was going after it as fast as he possibly could. And in doing so, Looks like he's cleaned up Santo Agwek in the process. There's a nasty head collision there. The referee's straight on it for halt proceedings. Medical assistance. Coming from the South Sudan bench. And the keeper will shake off that knock and continue. Still walking a little tenderly. Seems to have taken one on the jaw. So we've got another commentator joining the roster here with us. Surprise late entrant. You want to introduce yourself, mate? Uh, I go by the name uh, Achol, Achol Nai. Yeah. Here's Chol Gabriel for Kenya. Oh, well done. Oh! Clicked on by Boltong. Oh! And what a chance. Amazing. Splayed over the crossbar. My number six, Alawan Kang. Well, the goal was his mercy, but he couldn't finish, Lockie. That was a golden chance going begging. I think South Sudan and Kenya have both had big chances pass them by now, so they're one apiece on the scoreline and one apiece in the, the hypothetical scoreline as well. Big chance for Kenya. What have you made of the opening 10 or 15 minutes? I think, uh, no, it started a bit... Uh, it started fast than I thought. I really thought it was going to start a little bit slow because of the weather and everything. It's a beautiful start so far. Yeah. It's 
been action end to end. No caution from either of these teams. Alawan Kang trying to make up for his miss. He finds Bol Tong, who attempts a rather ambitious turn. Nicely done, too. Chok Dao battles for that ball. South Sudan throw. Would you say it's fair to say these two teams have deserved their place here? Outstanding teams in the tournament so far? Definitely, definitely. I've seen both of them in the semi-final and I straight away I knew they, they would play the final. I mean, they didn't make it easy for themselves, South Sudan. Come from behind, victory over Botswana. There's, yes. I think, a bit of angst about this team at times. They're so talented, but sometimes they seem to get in their own heads a little bit and, you know, the pressure and the expectation of this crowd might get to them a tad. Uh, I guess they didn't have the belief in them at that game. You know, it was a testimony, you know. But I guess, you know, they made it mm. and now they're in the final. It was just so striking to me in that semi-final. As soon as they equalised, they were a completely different team. The whole mentality changed. Yes. Chokdao scored that free kick. You know, he had a terrible miss in the first half from you know, 10 metres or so, but he scored a free kick from 20 metres into the top corner. Suddenly the whole team is buzzing, and they completely dominated the second half. It's a real mental game. Absolutely. I guess there's the argument to be made that if you are team who suffers from getting in their own head to have a come from behind win in the way that they did in the semi. That's kind of like the victory that you need if you want to prove that you can be a, a championship winning team. They've already come back from this behind in this game as well. It looks like Maliet is taking the set piece. It's a dangerous delivery. Almost went all the way in. Just too much on it. Plenty of whip and swerve from Kuat Maliet. And please correct me on any bad pronunciations <laughs> this evening. No, you're trying. You're trying your best. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a good sign. That's <laughs> if, if you say the name, then I'll know. It takes a bit of time. <laughs> it's not an easy thing, you know, pronunciation like the nya and the nga. Oh, nice uh, through ball. And here's Boltong with a chance for Kenya. Gets there just ahead of the goalkeeper. And Santo Agwek gets out to smother it. Maybe that was retribution for the earlier coming together. So I let you knock me about before and force me <laughs> onto the turf. I'm not going to let you score as well. Again, uh, Santo's been like, you know, amazing throughout the tournament so far. And... Referee attempts to play advantage here. Chock down. Looking for Sabit James. Nelson. Here's Troll Gabriel. End to end stuff. Boltong tries a little back heeled turn. Referee pulls it back for a, an offside flag. Both teams take a breather in these stifling hot conditions. Godfrey Akello goes back to his goalkeeper. That's really the, the first time in the game, that short break, where you've noticed the heat. As, as was pointed out before, you, you genuinely, if you're just tuning on in the stream, or you just jumped into this game at this point, you would have no idea how hot it's been today. Oh, Absolutely sorry. no clue, because the game has been played at a breakneck pace, and there's thousands of people standing out in the open as well. It's, um, I mean, it's I'm still stuff. here with you, and I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> Deng Nue taking the throw in. Maliet. James. Early ball. 
looking for the speedy Masque. Signed for Box Hill United for the upcoming MPL Victoria season. Prolific striker. His last year's Unite Cup MVP. Here's Chol Gabriel for Kenya, though. Cutting inside of Keller and unleashing. Oh. Looking for that top right corner. Oh. Well He's in form. After two goals in the semi final, Chol Gabriel is full of beans, full of confidence, and trying to shoot at any opportunity as. One of the South Sudanese defenders hits the deck. South Sudan playing a little bit, you know, the defense are clumsy at the back of it. Uh, special on the wing. Mm. Uh, they're letting another ball. Joe Gabriel, I think, took advantage of that, that space and that confusion that exists in the South Sudanese back line at the moment. Just didn't get the curve. I mean, he got some curve on it, but just not as much as he would have liked to really guide it, you know, onto that post and get it to kiss off and into the back of the net. He just took a lean back a little bit and... Mm. Just slightly off balance when he unleashed it. And the problem here is for the goal scorer. Karmas. Who trudges to the bench looking rather dejected. We hope that's not the end of his night. Lucky, just looking at these two rosters, I mean, stacked with MPL level talent. Yeah, I mean, amazing players. You know. It really is, and South Sudan in particular have a few names that make your eyes uh, pop out of the page when you read them, and not, not least Sabit James. You know, we, we know all about his exploits uh, with Western United in the MPL side last year, and now, you know, getting a, a chance to be involved in, in the senior fold as well. and. We've seen quite a few players who have played in this tournament, not just in recent years, but also this year as well. Secure moves elsewhere, not just in Australia, but, but overseas as overseas, well. Overseas, exactly. So an enforced change at the back for South Sudan. Off comes the goal scorer, Karmis. And on comes the towering figure of Yak Bol. Yach Bol? Yak Bol? Yach. Yach. <laughs> Yach. There we go. <laughs> Glad to have you here. <laughs> I'll help you with the pronunciation. Please. Need all the help I can get, unfortunately. I just have to call him that from now on. Yak. <laughs> Maybe that could be his nickname. He's about the size of a yak. He's, he wouldn't, go, wouldn't mess with him. Yeah. Well, Tony Yabo might have a few <laughs> things to say about that one. He represented South Sudan too in the <laughs> national level. Yeah, we've got quite a few fully capped internationals on the pitch. So, I mean, we call it a community tournament, but, you know, a lot of these players and some of them who represented South Sudan earlier in the competition are full internationals. Yes. You know, we talked about a player like uh, Yaj represented the national team, Sosa also represented the national team during the African Cup qualification. And, yeah, we also have uh, from the Kenyan team a few players that are going to be representing the South Sudan national team. So is this, is this, can we assume that this final is being watched somewhere off in the distance by whoever picks the South Sudanese national team, the selectors, <laughs> keeping an eye on this game, seeing if they can find any, any extra talent? Yes, I think there are a lot of coaches are watching this right now, especially uh, people from the Southern Sudan, you know, the US, uh, Canada, you know, it's kind of a, a big game. Yeah. Well, and, and again, it goes back to, to what we mentioned about how some of the players who have been in this tournament have been able to secure moves elsewhere. I mean, Dennis Delury, who's also a, a representative of the, the national team. Yes. Now, just recently uh, secured that move up to the Maltese Challenge League and, you know, football empowerment also are, are, are crucial in helping those things come together. I think yes. Amir Abdallah is now in Estonia, a, a former player of, of this tournament in years gone by. And this is just the beginning. Exactly. Amazing spectators too. 
beautiful crowd. Well, the DJ might not be playing his music during the games, but the supporters are providing it. <laughs> Wonderful soundtrack to a really interesting contest. As Kenya worked the ball to Bolton. First time pass. Now they've got an overlap on the right-hand side. Chokdow doing his defensive work. And now Boltong might have a shooting chance. It's deflected oh, and it's in. Kenya. Kenya go ahead once again with the aid of a deflection. And here it comes. Sue, the trademark celebration. Boltong puts them in front. Well, in terms of goal quality, uh, I don't think I've ever seen a goal that deserves a Sioux celebration less. But in the context of the game, how important it is, it is, it is more than apt. The game had entered into a, a little bit of a, a, a lull state, I guess, after that initial fiery start. And uh, I think South, I think Kenya caught South Sudan just napping there. Yes, and it goes back to the defense. South, South Sudan defense is a little bit you know, fragile at the back, you know, letting a lot of balls in. And they're suffering from it right now. I mean, at a moment like that, you have to close in your players yeah. and uh, don't leave any space at the back. I mean, Kenya's not an easy team to play. We've seen it throughout the tournament. They Their wingers are just so strong and the fullbacks get forward as well. They're really strong in wide areas. And yeah. I see South Sudan has gone with maybe more of a narrow back three with wing backs today, which might leave them vulnerable to those overlaps. It's an unceremonious challenge on Tuach Simon Jr. And that will be a yellow card for number five, Matur Dong. First yellow card. I believe it was for Dong, I might be mistaken mistaken it was the set piece seconds after the opening goal for Kenya that gave South Sudan a, a window back into a 1-1 scoreline and perhaps this set piece may be able to do the same we've seen the keeper for Kenya have a few troubles dealing with balls high into that penalty area especially with a lot of wind swirling about so this could be a good opportunity for South Sudan I think I might have got the yellow card wrong. I think it's actually Ajak Deo who's into the book. They got Yak in the middle too. Well, that free kick was nowhere near the target. But having earned it, he felt he was entitled to take it, I think. Simon. Played short. Manyang. With the header, but Kenya onto the second ball in a flash. Gabriel. Passed ball. Manyang with some good defensive help. But they've been able to isolate the centre backs on either side of that back three and, and run at them. And it's causing all sorts of problems for South Sudan we've been saying isn't it? it's just the incisiveness of the wing play for Kenya both on the left and the right just every time the wingers especially Joel Gabriel get on the ball they just look as though they're going to create not a goal necessarily but at least a shooting opportunity it's a great cross Agwet came out again and didn't quite get there and he was bailed out by his center back Nial Deng his ball Tong trying to work his magic his pass two here, Tong squares it up. Can't quite find a teammate, but it's still alive for Kenya. Manya, shot from range. That will be deflected for a Kenyan throw. Again, Kenya is being a threat to South Sudan, especially uh, from the midfield. Mm. Yeah. And I think Santo Agro can sense that maybe a little bit of instability in front of him in that back line. He was giving it full bore to the defenders on the left-hand side that, that let Boltong just somehow manage to, to find a yard. And uh, 
I would say that the, the keeper is, is, in this instance, well within his rights to uh, kick off his defensive line because it was just too easy for Boltom to, to try and get the opening. And really, the only thing that stopped Kenya from getting a, a potential chance to go too clear was that the cutback from, from Boltong was just a little bit wide and not by much of its intended target. Just realised I made a mistake with the 13 and 15. So uh, I'll blame the handwriting on the team sheets. <laughs> <laughs> bit tricky there. But uh, Sabit so James is so the number 13. Well. Well. He looks to be going to the bench now. At least changing positions. Swapping with Masque. And what a substitution that is. Two out Simon Jr. has come on in that right wing back slot. Or perhaps Quay will be ordered there. Certainly got the pace, but more of an attacking player. Looked on by Deo. Here's Joel Gabriel trying to curl one again. He's so dangerous. He's popping up left, right, and center. Always finding space for efforts on goal. After a good start, Kenya are really dominating this contest. So far. Long way left to go in this one. Only half an hour played. Seen both sides prolific in this tournament, more than capable coming back from pretty much any score line, such as the firepower. Dang loses out, but ball trickles back to Godfrey Akello. Now Bowl. He's got range with his passing, and that one is pinpoint to Simon. So Quay losing out. It's pressure from multiple defenders. Ball across. And that was a bit of a cynical handball from Yach Ball, and he will go into the book as a result. That was a silly thing to do. Maybe he thought the referee couldn't see on that angle, but... <laughs> I, think, I think the problem with that one is the referee might not be able to see it, but the crowd can... <laughs> And uh, the court of public opinion does hold quite a lot of weight <laughs> in this sort of environment. I better believe it does. I mean, if you're, you're the last player, you have to do something. You know, especially if your uh, opponent is so fast and, you know. To be fair, I think uh, as a, if, you, if you're a player, we've all been there. You, 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 just, you just slap the ball sometimes without thinking about it. It happens. You yeah. pick it up, thinking it's a throw-in, and it's not. Free kick from... I mean, during my playing career, I've done horrible tackles, <laughs> <laughs> you know, tricky things. It works at the end. Worse than an intentional handball, is yeah. what you're saying. <laughs> as long as you don't do it in the box. <laughs> the hand of bowl is one he doesn't get away with. <laughs> he sends it up to a Kuno. Flicks it on and runs on to the rebound that comes off the defender. A Kuno from range. It's a bouncy surface here. It can be difficult. Those daisy cutters along the turf, but straight down into the breadbasket of Guy Anyang. Kuno was sizing that up for such a long time. You, you, you get that sort of like, when you, if you've watched enough kind of, of strikers moving about in front of the penalty area in the box, you get, you get the sense when they, they like what's ahead of them, and yeah. you could tell he was just trying to find the range. Unfortunately, maybe he took too much time with it in the end. Manyang. Quay. Jock across with a hefty challenge. He protests his innocence, but looked rather guilty and apologetic in doing so. South Sudan free kick. Salvatore across to take it. Will be an in-swinger with his left foot. Quay an option as well. Papaya Kuno is in the box again. We've got Manyang and Maliet to aim for as well. It's in dangerously and 
Dutteu judges it perfectly. Again, uh, the Kenyan defense uh, absolutely switched on. So. Pretty well marshaled back there. Ball under pressure. But turns Gabriel effortlessly. I was very impressed with Dutteu in the semi final, the left back. He scored from a set piece, but was excellent going forward and defensively. Alonso. Salvatore. Okello. Dang. Into the feet of oh, no one in particular, but South Sudan's attack continues. And a slip up from Kenya gives Sudan possession again. Dang. A chop down. Outstanding, particularly in the second half of the semi. Kenya are so well marshaled, Lockie. What do you think South Sudan needs to do to find some gaps in this sturdy rear guard? Oh, it's, it's a great question because I think that is really that patch of play is a big insight to the biggest difference we're seeing between these two teams. Every time Kenya get the ball into a wide position, they're going to look like they're going to make something happen. Contrast that with South Sudan. They've had almost no joy going down either flank. So... Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a question of, of, of getting an extra number, mm. trying to create an overload on either flank um, to, to give the wingers some extra support, or just the wingers being a bit more willing to sort of um, take on their man, put the ball into space, because you know, really take a, a leaf out of the, the Kenyan wingers' book because they're, they're making it happen. They're the ones making it happen at the moment. I mean, if you look at the Kenyan team from the back, uh, pretty well organised in the midfield too. Mm. It makes it easier for the wingers to wander around, mm. get all the passes that they need. And, and also with this formation, they don't really have to track back too far, the Kenyan wingers. Exactly. Not too far over halfway. Yeah. Jacques. Plays so much talent, but no whistle there. He's getting plenty of defensive attention every time he gets the ball, Masque. Here's Dow. Checks inside and might unleash from range, but that's well off target. I think he hit a bird on the, <laughs> on the way out there. I was a little worried about my car. Yeah, I'd be less worried about the birds and more worried about the windscreen. <laughs> my car's not in there, so I'm covered. <laughs> I'm covered. Yeah. I think may maybe for the, the South Sudanese wing, it's just to, to go back to that discussion. Maybe it is just a problem of, of getting support. They need a few more numbers. I mean, obviously, it's risky for South Sudan to, to bring an extra midfielder into that pocket of space when the ball's down there, yeah. um, given how dangerous Kenya are in transition. But you kind of need to take that risk because clearly you know, the, the wide play at the moment for them just isn't working. So maybe even getting the fullback slightly further forward as well could be something that will help South Sudan in the wide areas. Salvatore, no way past Jacques. This pass is well off target. Tom putting the pressure on Okello. The rebound falls to Ruben Manyang. Just wonder whether South Sudan would be better served going back to the original shape they played in at the start of Sunday semi-final. These wingbacks certainly served them well when they were striding forward and Looking for an equaliser, but is it a good matchup against this Kenyan team who have so much talent up front? Can basically go man for man against the three centre backs. Sedan's attack breaks down yet again. It's Tong. Jock with the big switch, but can't get over the head of Bol. It's un unfortunate, though, the injury was for Amin Homkamas. Having Yachbol there, 
I think has actually helped them a little bit solidi to solidify that back line. Chance for Kenya, and that's an ambitious attempt from a very narrow angle from Alun Kang. Probably not one, if he decides to watch this live stream later, not one <laughs> that he'd want to look back on necessarily. Again, South Sudan is just playing too high, you know, leaving the defenders to do all the job for them. Um, at this moment, uh, the midfielders have to track back, especially the two uh, centre defensive midfield. Mayakuno's yeah. the... flick on. Salvatore goes in behind. And shielded by Dong for Anyang to gather. Manyang for a tight gap. And manages somehow to get past Salvatore as well, but the recovering challenge. And the South Sudanese number seven makes up for it. Now a chance to break with Quay. The stepovers, the dazzling stepovers gets the crowd on their feet. But Quayo Manyang gets back to make the sliding challenge. Maliet. Sliding challenge from Ajak Deu. And Boltong picks off that hospital pass from Akello. And he's got Chol Gabriel in the middle if he can find him, but check inside was well read. It wasn't just not a great pass, but there was no call. There was no man on, no left shoulder. He's being instructed to look out and... That's, you always want to get the warning when you've got Boltong trying to chase you down. And the South Sudanese fans, I'm sure you can hear on the mic, trying to get some chants going. <laughs> Slightly partisan uh, DJ booth, I think. Maybe the mic is fair games to her. Fair game to whoever can get their hands on it. Oh, thumps that one all the way to his bench. Dave. Dang nowhere. Manyang is popping up everywhere, dropping deep if he has to, the number 10. And gets the ball again here. Chased down by Maliet. He releases in time for Gabriel. And last touch off Simon Jr. Kenya corner. That was a beautiful move by Kenya, actually. Uh... Played through all the lines. Manyan dropping deep to get free and combining with his winger. He takes responsibility for the set piece as well. Four, five, six players at the back post, all clustered together. It's into the pack, it's Tong oh. off the crossbar. Completely free, Bol Tong. He got great purchase on the header, descended back across goal. But it clatters off the woodwork and behind for a goal kick. Nearly 3-1. What a great chance that was for Boltong. It missed the tall timber on the penalty spot and fell out to him towards the back stick. And he hung up in the air for quite some time. Got good contact, good power, good placement. But uh, not quite good enough, unfortunately, for the case of Kenya. But yeah, a lick of paint away from what would have been a very important third goal. Doesn't, doesn't really matter where he's picking up the ball at the moment, whether it's on the break, you know, intercepting it off someone else, crosses, free kicks. Bol Tong just is a constant threat in this game at the moment. He is. And when you have a player like that, you don't have to worry at all. You know. And 
also it, it's handy being a, a teammate of someone like that because so much defensive attention goes to him that you end up in more space yourself. And yeah, yeah. someone who stands out like that just causes so many problems. Especially when he's facing goal, you know, he's absolutely lethal. It is a South Melbourne junior. Yes, sir. Uh, Has he made a move no. recently? I know he played for South Melbourne in the past. I think he made a move, but uh, I'm not sure which club is that at the moment. <laughs> well, whichever club it is, they're we'll lucky have to, to have guess. him. If you know, let us know in the comments. It's an interactive broadcast here. Maniac. Forward for a Payakuno to chase. Goalkeeper off his line. Desperate defending. And there's a Payakuno clatters into the centre back, second to the ball. Kenya win the free kick at some personal cost. A Payakuno pretty upset with the referee, and I don't think that's without justification. I, I thought the ball was there to be won. Players both clattered into one another. I mean, it, you know, it, obviously... The, it Do we have a VR here? <laughs> <laughs> Not for a chance or a free kick outside the box, though. I mean, if the referee would like to come in and, and look at our slightly delayed laptop stream, <laughs> he can. Well, that will do it for the first half here at Ralph Reserve in Sunshine West. It's been a very entertaining one. Started in spectacular fashion as Kenya took the lead and South Sudan immediately pegged them back off a set piece. Kenya again taking control, taking advantage into the halftime break and South Sudan will have to come from behind once again if they want to claim the title. Your thoughts on the first half, gentlemen? Well, it started in an absolute fury and uh, slowly settled down into a rhythm as time went on. And I think as that did happen, Kenya just, just took control. I think they're very comfortable in this game at the moment. And really the onus, not just on the scoreline, but on the general balance of play, is on South Sudan to figure out what more they can do um, to turn the game around in the next 45 minutes and, and get the African Nations Cup trophy that they've been searching for for such a long time. Yeah, well, I think, you know, for me, Kenya was the better organised team so far in the first half. You know... From the wing, defense, the midfield, the goalkeeper, everything. Composure is very important at this kind of uh, game, you know. And, and that's, that's what stands out with Kenya. You know, South Sudan, a pretty emotional team. You know, yeah. they have swings and peaks and troughs, and they can be brilliant yeah. at their best and in their own heads at their worst, whereas Kenya have been very consistent over the tournament. And yeah. That... And the second half is still going to come, you know. So uh, they have a lot of work to do in the dressing room at the moment. And I think that's the big question of the second 45 is, is can South Sudan channel that energy that they've got that can be used for good and bad you know, for the best possible outcome in, in the next half? Well, they'll need an inspiring halftime team talk. Got plenty of work to do. But if anyone can do it, it's South Sudan. This game deliciously, delicately poised at halftime. Don't you dare go anywhere. It's the African Nations Cup Grand Final. At halftime, South Sudan 1, Kenya 2.
want to brace ourselves. We want that energy. We want to bring that spirit into this game as we kick off. So now uh, the scores are still the same. So two one for Kenya and South Sudan on one. So let's brace ourselves, everyone. It's going to be an amazing game for sure. Let's go. It all comes down to this, the final of the African Nations Cup. Kenya lead at the halftime interval, 2-1 over South Sudan. It's been a wonderful contest so far. So much quality on display. The capacity crowd here at Ralph Reserve in Sunshine West. I'm Josh Parrish. I've got Lockie Flanagan alongside me. And we've got a Chol with us as well. Coach extraordinaire. <laughs> Helping us with our pronunciations as well. Is grateful Definitely. for that. South Sudan in their all green strip, kicking from right to left in the second half. Kenya in the purple. And we've got some lightning in the background, so we'll hope that that doesn't impact the staging of the rest of this contest. I mean, we want lightning on the pitch, but only in metaphorical form. <laughs> we, we want lightning wingers. We don't want literal lightning. That would be bad. So and keep an eye out. Team Kenya have a couple of those lightning wingers, don't they? It's a very good point. It's been one of the biggest issues that South Sudan had to deal with in that opening 45. And really, the, the, all the pressure, I think, is on South Sudan. We were talking about it before the break. Kenya, as, as they settled into the half, as the frenetic opening 10-15 came down, they were in control, basically, for this game. So, so the onus really is on South Sudan to, to see what they can do on the attacking end and... and try and unsettle um, what a disciplined and, and really relaxed uh, side Kenya have been to, to this point of the game. If you look at the South Sudan national team, it's full of depth, you know, players, big players representing the nation. And if you look at the Kenyan team, you know, just very ambitious young, you know, youth. What's that, that old phrase, a team of champions uh, against the champion team or something like that? <laughs> South Sudan. At this moment, is the champion against the champion. <laughs> <laughs> They've got plenty of options on the bench. They need to make changes. Looks like a similar lineup in the second half. Perhaps unchanged even for South Sudan. Kenya have brought in number 18, Chol Mamer, into the right back slot. Looking at our Chol questioningly to see if I've got that one right. <laughs> <laughs> and Apaya Kuno is down. Contact on the back of the left ankle there. Talking to. For number 24. Deng Nguyen. He just caught it. A bit on the, the back of the ankle after going for that aerial challenge. Hopefully, he's able to get up and continue because I mean, I'm a little bit biased as someone who spends a, a lot of time watching and, and commentating the MPL2, um, but I'm very interested to see what Apaya Kuno can do in this second half. He's scored so many goals with his uh, normal club, Mullen City. Well, I'm looking for confirmation here from Achol. We've got two number 24s on the team sheet. Is it Deng Nguyen or Garang Aru? I think it's uh, Garang Aru at the moment. Okay. Yes. Keep at, us posted, please. At the, at the moment, he may shapeshift. <laughs> Relying on our handwritten team sheet, which is completely accurate. Salvatore's ball in, flicked on by Masque. Sort of came off his back there and... Well saved from, from Guy Anyang, who's been a safe pair of hands so far. Masque has had two decent chances quite close to goal from set pieces that he hasn't made count just yet. But I think that that might be, you know, if we're looking at South Sudan's difficulty in open play, set pieces really might be the avenue for them because it's, it's basically where they've created all of their best chances and, of course, the only goal they've got in this game. Is Dudayu steaming back the left back just to cut out that pass? It was looking like a really promising opening for South Sudan. And consequently, it's Team Kenya on the charge, and Ajak Dayu has 
Ball to chase down here. It's a great delivery, whipped into the back stick. Simon Jr. did well. There's got to be 2,000 people here now. It's crazy. It's, it's a huge crowd. At least 1,000. We can, we can see the, the picture that the viewers are lucky enough to see at the moment. And I, I'm almost hoping for the camera to pan towards the corner flag <laughs> every time because you just get a sense of just how many people there are crammed into the stand. And not just that, but also, as we can see on the other side of the fence, it's... It's such a, such a great tournament and gets such great numbers every year. Yeah, similar story in uh, Perth and Sydney. Same thing with the African uh, tournament there. It's a terrific uh, tournament in Adelaide every year as yeah. well. Yeah. Koyo Manyang intercepting that one. Still South Sudan gradually gaining territory on the right hand side. And they wriggle free here. It's Mulliet. Stuck in the corner. Manyang back heels it over the touchline and South Sudan take the throw in quickly. Masque. Unleashes, Ooh. just flashes across the face of goal. Masokwe can go from zero to 100 in an instant. It wasn't far away there from an equaliser. Those, those bouncing shots are, are along the turf are always difficult to, to deal with for goalkeepers. Even from central areas, they're always worried about where that ball's going to bounce after it hit the turf. And... I think that Anyang was a, a little bit <laughs> concerned as well as that ball hit the turf, and luckily for him, it, it bounced on the right side of the post for the Kenyan keeper. But it was definitely a warning shot from Masque. Might be Simon Junior who's down here at the moment. He just took an awkward fall and maybe even hit his head on the turf. For inquiring as to his. health and seems okay to continue. Again, South Sudan started uh, you know, better. Uh, had a couple of chances. You know, a couple of shots and more organized. Is, it, is this maybe a, a deliberate ploy from Kenya? We saw how good they were in transition in the first half on the counter-attack. Are they just kind of happy with their lead to kind of defend the let Sudan, South Sudan have the ball in the hope that they can maybe score a third on the break? Definitely. And, you know, 2-1 lead is a dangerous, you know, kind of lead to have. You know, you have to be comfortable scoring more goals and you have to keep going until the whistle goes off, you know. Uh, you can't settle for two. You gotta be hungry for more goal. But I think they will come back. You know, it's a matter of time before they show up. Plenty of twists and turns left in this one for sure. Anyang. Good diagonal ball. And Guy Anyang in the way. Masque is just waiting for his opportunity. Simon Jr. Maliet. South Sudan getting more passing combinations going on in midfield than they did in the first half. And now Chokdao chops inside. Wing back to wing back. Sent into the penalty area. Too high for the diminutive Dow. And now Boltong. The ball back for Deu. Strike on goal, saved. And the rebound falls kindly for South Sudan. And now they break through Masque. Bowled over. And with the help of his assistant, the referee will pay that one right on the edge of the penalty area. I don't think that's a foul, actually. You know, that's a shoulder to shoulder. 
And that's quite kind of refusing the handshake of Jack Day, who was not pleased with that challenge. Referee in discussions with his assistant. And I think it's just a free kick, but in a promising position. Could be to shoot, could be to send the ball in the box. I think at this moment we say that uh, South Sudan is really good at set pieces. <laughs> yeah. They scored one in the semi final. Yeah. Jock Dow with his right footed curler. Might suit a left footer here. Perhaps it could be Nelson Salvatore. Pia Kuno in discussions as well. And he leaves it for the left foot. South Sudan's number seven. Will he go for goal? Salvatore, an acute angle. Numbers in the box for a header or a rebound. Three in the wall. Salvatore's delivery is just too high for a Pia Kuno. Not sure if he was trying to cross or find the top corner there. Might have been a little of both. I think he's trying to find the far corner. We've seen the spectacular goal they scored uh, in the semi-final. Maybe a little bit caught in two minds because clearly a, a Paya Kuno was asking for it beforehand saying, just look, put it on my head. And he peeled off onto that, that back post area. He was unmarked, but yeah, Salvatore not getting it near to a teammate and unfortunately not getting it near to the goal either. Chol Mamer with the throw in. Okoyo Manyang. Yachpol makes the interception. And here comes Masque. Maliet almost lost it behind him. And the shot from Masque is over the crossbar, but they will get a free kick, South Sudan. He was caught late. And the card is out of the pocket. Again, if you're a defender, you can't just be giving fouls around this area, you mm. know, outside the box. Very dangerous. Especially if you've been studying the tape of, of South Sudan in the previous game. You know, they, they like free kicks from this sort of area. They scored one last week. Yes, yes. Mabi or Deng, I think, going into the book there for that tackle. Yeah. They have uh, players like Nelson, uh, Yaj, who can take the free kick. I say credit must go, I think, earlier in that phase of play to, to, to Yach Bowl as well. I think he's been mm. really impressive since he's come off the bench. Uh, he certainly made that South Sudan backline look a, a little bit more solid than it did in the opening stages. He's just made a few good interceptions and you know got his head and, and his outstretched legs where they needed to be at the right time. Well, they were trailing 2-1 in the semi-final and a free kick completely flipped the game on its head. It was chalked down on Sunday. He's lining up again. Salvatore over it as well. A great position to get one on target. It's chalked down into the wall. And it trickles out off him. See the frustration failing to beat what was a towering Kenyan wall. Round of applause for number five. Oh, sorry, number six, I should say. Alun Kang. There you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Alun Kang. This is growth. Alun Kang. This is, this is good, Josh. This is good practice for the MPL Victoria <laughs> season, which myself and Lockie will both be commentating. Starting very, very soon. Getting, Many of these players will be participating. Exactly, that's what I was going to say. We're getting an early look at <laughs> quite a few of them. Always good.
Deo with the clearance. Joel Gabriel chasing it down. John Maniok has come off the bench. Dale with the throw in down the line. Ball with the height advantage. Excellent turn from Masque, and now Sedan run out of room. Duke Dale finds Joel Gabriel, but his touch lets him down. Kuno can't quite get there. Calmly done from Kenya in midfield under pressure. As soon as it gets past that midfield line, though, they give it away. And Bowl, who's been everywhere since he's come on, feeds chocked out in the South Sudanese attack. Down, ball in the corner. It's played back to Deng. Trying to find an opening. Kenya. With the defensive coverage, it's not cleared. Salvatore was trying to get it, and now perhaps trying to move on the break were Kenya. Bit of aerial ping pong going on at the moment. Played across a Kuno. In fact, it's Mas Quay who's got the opening on this left hand side. He tries to cut inside, looking for the shooting angle, eventually loses the ball out. He still gamble for it. And that ball had crossed over the line and for a goal kick, but Masque continues to be the alpha and omega for South Sudan going forward. He just never gives up the fight. Maybe it was an offside, actually. Looks I think like it's, it's an offside, kick. yes. Ah. So the assistant raised his flag, flag for something. Looks like from where they're taking the free kick from, it must have been Masque who just drifted offside as he came back to receive that ball. First minute of the second half, but he's still Kenya ahead by a margin of two goals to one. South Sudan continue to push as Man Young lost that ball over the left hand side to Chok Dow, takes it to the byline. Great challenge in there. It was Chol Mame who got across in time. Great recovering tackle. What a little sprayed ball across the face of the pitch that was from Ruben Man Young. Not enough to win his side a corner, though. The efforts have chopped down, and now he'll get to take that same corner. And Yak Bowl was rising for it. He doesn't have to do a lot to rise above the rest, I guess, being as tall as he is, but unfortunately couldn't get the header on target. Good chance goes begging for South Sudan. He hopped above the rest. <laughs> Daintily. It's all South Sudan as they search for that equalising goal. Kenya oh. just sitting back right now at the moment. And trying to defend, uh, defend as much as they can. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think South Sudan is starting to ask more and more questions, but Kenya still look pretty comfortable in all honesty. I don't think they've had too many calamitous moments just yet as the Payakuno loses the 50-50 challenge to Mavior Deng. Maliet picking it up. He's got options ahead of him. One is Mas Quay, who thought he'd be able to continue to take the ball, but the referee pulls back for the earlier infringement on Maliet. It's taken quickly by South Sudan. Chocked out on the other side. He's cut in, shoots low. And a good save from Guy Yan Yang at the near post. But that was what we need to see more of, I think, from South Sudan. They took that free kick quickly. They caught the Kenyan defence napping. And it was a very good chance in the end for South Sudan. Resembling a back four, their formation now. Seems to have switched it up slightly. It was the left back. 
Lost touch, let him down. Uh, Nyal Deng. I mean, we were talking before about, you know, when you 2-1 ahead, you know, you'll have to play. You can't just set it back, mm. you know, because if your opponent is score, yeah. you'll have to work hard. It's a good question. I mean, are, are Kenya inviting a little bit too much pressure here and, and allowing South Sudan to, to build back that, that sense of, of self-confidence and believe that they can, can get not just an equaliser, but perhaps even more? Or maybe they're just getting a bit cocky about it, then, you know. Well, I'm not, I'm not professing to have the answer to the question. <laughs> we'll find out in, in about 25 minutes' time. Have a chance now, Kenya. Joel Gabriel plays the 1-2 and oh. he scores! Oh. What a goal, Joel Gabriel! The shirts come off. The lids come off for Kenya. 3-1. And is that the goal that seals the title? Fantastic young player, absolutely fantastic. You know. yeah, well, we were just talking about it, you know, how long would this approach sitting back, trying to grab a third goal, would it work out for Kenya? Well, I said it was going to take 25 minutes to answer that question, but it seems like we've come a lot closer to an answer in the last 30 seconds. That was a beautiful little interchange through the middle, and Josh, I think you said it best. The roof's come off. This whole place, this whole stand went alight as Kenya went about the near side in celebration and that is a very important goal in this contest and surely you'd imagine that'll have knocked quite a bit of the wind out of the sails of South Sudan. Outstanding in the semi-final. He's lit up this pitch again today. Joel Gabriel. I think he's uh, the player of the match so far. Mm. Yeah. Hard to argue on the basis of that goal. It was just such a lovely, it was so simple, but, but very impressive in its design. You know, the, the ball coming down from the long ball into the penalty area. And then just, it shows you that the, the, the benefit of that bounce pass, doesn't it? Because it was only an exchange of three passes, but it, it ended up in such a great opportunity. And the little inventive kind of outstretched toe poke finish from Chol Gabriel went through the legs of the keeper. It was simple, but impressive stuff. Well, they've still got time, South Sudan. Now Deng calling for calm. It's out to bowl. Plays the easy pass to Salvatore, but he's under pressure. Bol Tong got a touch on it. Couldn't intercept. Deng. Forced backwards. Okello. All the way back to Santo Aguac. Masque. Just past Deu. Centre back came steaming in. And now it's into that corridor of uncertainty. Kenya trying to take advantage. Bokoyo Manyang bundles his way past. It's an open goal. And there it is. Joel Gabriel again. It's his night. It's Kenya's night. Sue. 4 1. Questions we were asking of whether or not Joel Gabriel would walk home with the man of the match. Safe to say, gentlemen, I don't think it's a question anymore. You can barely hear each other over the noise of the crowd it's now. It's all over here. It's all over. It's all over. It's party time for Kenya. I don't think there's a comeback for this one here. They've picked their moments, Kenya, haven't they? Yes, yes. What a finish, though. You have to credit the work of Pokoyo Manyang as well, who's contributed everywhere on the field and was crucial to that move. And also, go back about the defending, uh, the South Sudan defense. You can't play like that. You have to clear the ball. You have to be switched on all that time for 90 minutes. Yeah, I mean, we saw it as the ball came in, just letting it bounce in front of the penalty area. As a centre-back, you know, you'd rather get any contact on the ball than, than let it bounce in front of you and really that was what led to the goal yes. uh, you know even if it's a bad header even if it's a, an, an outstretched foot that 
sends it for a corner or something like that, you would rather that than let it bounce in and around the penalty area. It just it puts so much pressure on the back four. And Kenya, to their credit, took full advantage. If you have a team that uh, like Kenya who play fast and mm. have the players that would good uh, kind of touches, you know, you have to be very clinical. Mm. Well, you can't take is, chances, you, and you don't know where the ball's going to bounce. Yeah. So the, the minute you let it hit that turf, you might you know, might not be able to control it on the on the rebound, and, and of course they weren't. It fell right into into Kenya's lap, and that was what set them through and allowed them to score the fourth goal. You get punished, absolutely. And you see uh, at the end. Uh, Fantastic goal by Charles. I think we're looking for a hat trick. Hundred <laughs> percent. What's that? Two tonight for him? Ah, uh, two. Yes. Two for him. Yes. Manyang on the score sheet as well. Yes. Was it Bol Tong with the other goal? Ah, uh, yes. Bol Tong, Manyang, and two with uh, Charles. I scored so many. It's hard to keep track of. <laughs> and there, a score for you too for saying Manyang. <laughs> know they came back from behind in the previous game in the semi-final against Botswana but I, I think this you know the, 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 the thing that's in their favor is there is still 20 minutes of play left to go stranger things in football have happened but this is you know make no mistake about it this is a mountain and, and not a molehill for South Sudan they need a miracle <laughs> Bams. So it's not a mountain, it's not a molehill, it is a miracle, <laughs> in fact. It's even bigger. Ball. Is it out to Dow? Pass to control, but he gets it eventually. He's been moved further forward, Yatch Ball. You can see why with distribution like that. Masque again, straying the wrong side of the last defender. about throwing the kitchen sink to try and get a result, I think. South Sudan probably are going to need to throw the whole house to try and square this one up. As that's missed. Chol Gabriel will hunt this one, battling. Just look at the determination. He always, want, that he always wants the ball, and I think, I think Boltong as well, I, I know he's maybe faded a little bit out of this second half, but every time there's a 50-50 there to be won, both wingers just consistently have tried to hunt it down. And usually it's worked. And Jack Dave for Kenya, now Manyok. Full of confidence now, and why wouldn't they be? Bolton playing at walking pace. The LAs might start if they can string together a few passes. Another change for South Sudan. Godfrey Akello making his way off the pitch. A South Sudan former international. He's done an admirable job at the heart of the defence, really, considering how much pressure they've been under, but maybe it's the, the team defending that's let South Sudan down in this match, as opposed to individual errors. Sabit James back into the action, and they need him. They need a miracle. Bolton. Kenya. Trying to fashion something. It's the man oh. on the hat trick who just was off balance taking that snapshot. Players in that Kenyan front row, he'll be very frustrated with the way that panned out. Of course, Chol Gabriel with the, the final effort that ended up in the car park, but Paul Tong as well, who missed his effort to divert it as Masque tries to gamble on that one. So too did Apaya Kuno, both missed out. And now Kenya can move the other way. That oh. ball's played forward. Bol Tong is chasing it down. The flag remains down. Chol Gabriel's in the middle, but unfortunately. Fast though he is, that ball was just a little bit too pacey for the on-rushing Boltong, and a good chance goes begging 
for Kenya. The wind has picked up. The rain is falling. It's a coming. <laughs> Much to the relief for these players and particularly the spectators in this stifling heat. But again, credit to each and every single one of them for, for turning out in what was, at the start of the women's final, your borderline oppressive conditions <laughs> in which to stand out in the sun and, and really the fans have turned out in numbers to engage in what has been, I think, an electric final, uh, even if it has or currently sits so convincingly in favour of Kenya. It's been in the balance for long periods. Who knows, one goal for South Sudan and they get their confidence back. Anything could happen. Quay, few step overs, but not enough to confuse the Kenyan defenders and perhaps a little bit of frustration just bubbling over there for Mas Quay as he bowls over a few. Just hasn't been their day, South Sudan. I mean, you can see still, uh, they're still trying their best, you know. Yeah, I think... Mas Quay is definitely a, a, a player who will be able to leave with his head held high. He's, he's chased down every every ball that's been there to be won. He's always given it his everything, even if it hasn't ended up quite the way he would have wanted on every occasion. Time slipping away for South Sudan to unleash any potential miracle. I don't mean time slipping away for us to finish this game. <laughs> The storm approaches at a, at a breakneck pace. Clatters over our equipment. Sends the team sheets flying. The wind is coming and Dutte is running like the wind down this left-hand side. Ooh. And Boltong ends up in the how, net. The ball how, does not. How desperately does Boltong want that second goal? He's throwing himself at every half chance, every little nick and or touch he can get with any part of the body. It, it, you know, it is a bit party time for Kenya at the moment, and I think Boltong wants to get back in on the action. Oh, that is a sign of the conditions here, that that clearance high into the sky ends up further back than the actual position where the defender tried to clear the, clear the ball from. They've got the wind on their side at least, South Sudan. I don't know if it helps or hinders. Anyone's guess, I think, at the present moment. Moni Ping Deng is on. The number 19. Chu, who's felled. Quat Maliet with a rather ill tempered challenge, and he will go into the book as well. Yellow card. A perfect definition of Melbourne weather for you. <laughs> Four seasons a day. The, the, the way the wind is moving, we're seeing quite a lot of debris and sort of just rubbish come onto the field. It almost kind of looks, because it's being whipped up into the air and then coming back down, it does sort of look like it's raining rubbish, which I wouldn't put it past Melbourne to do that sort of thing, to be honest. But, uh, I, don't think, I don't think the, the weather is going to phase the enthusiasm these Kenyan fans and of these Kenyan players one bit when the full-time whistle does eventually blow. And this will be an enforced substitution here. Mabi or Deng unable to continue. Credit to the PA system, just sensing the need for a bit of musical interlude. Not complaining. There have been a few stoppages in this game. Some of them drink breaks. Others injury enforced. It is the, the, the music does fly somewhat in the face of, uh, of a player being carted off with injury, but I think I appreciate the, uh, the morale boost nonetheless as we look like we can Good, finally get back underway here at Ralph Reserve. The ball is... Pumped forward to no one in particular. And South Sudan will retake possession. Chokdao passing on the throw to Simon Jr. Ball 
all sprayed forward, looking for a Paya Kuno in the wind. That was always going to be a tough ask. And Guyan Young collects that ball into his clutches very, very gracefully indeed. They're not necessarily great conditions for a ball heavy wind, but they're worst conditions of all for a goalkeeper as Boltong once again gambling and nearly winning it out. Play stays with Kenya. Offside, or perhaps an earlier infringement. As the ball's back, or was back in Kenyan possession for a second there. Matt's Quay just missing that header as it came through. And I don't know how, with 12 minutes left in this game, but it feels like more people are still filing into the stadium. It, it just seems like every time we look out ahead of us that the ground gets more and more congested. And it really is impressive stuff. Okoya Manyang with a bit of space. He plays the unselfish option and perhaps he should have taken the shot on himself. Saw a Paya Kuno unload from similar range and similar position in the first half. Mind you to, to know not much success, but strikers have done stranger things in the past from that sort of area. Actually, you can confirm or deny, but I think some people come for the game and some people come for the party afterwards. I think most of them are for the game. <laughs> That's good to hear. Most. <laughs> Most, but not all. And that this, might explain uh, the numbers swelling you know, slightly in the last few minutes as this game reaches its climax. After the game, is going to be a definitely party. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's either that or the, the thunderstorm wind has blown them in from, from somewhere else. I mean, who knows, really? And I mean, when we see the, the final whistle, the whole crowd will be inside the field. And, yeah. You know. I mean, anyone who saw the final last year knows how how uh, gargantuan the scenes were at the full-time exactly. whistle players and that was out at Kiel or East there was two pitches there and, and both of them were covered with players it's John Maniok hustling and bustling his way through the South Sudanese back line still haven't got it clear now they do through Simon Jr up with a Payakuno now South Sudan desperately need a goal. Any chance of a comeback, it's chocked down. Delicate little chip over the top. Kuat Maliet swung into the near post and Kenya play their way out effortlessly. And now they've got numbers, it's three versus two. Crucial intervention from Bol Mathiang and a bad challenge. Raises the temper of the Kenyan bench. You can't do that. You can't do that. Absolutely. You know. And it was Chol Gabriel who was chopped down there. Quite possibly Kenya's best player in this game. See why he's been targeted. Unstoppable. This is the only way you got to stop him. Yeah, I think it's uh, the challenge on Joel Gabriel is a sign of frustration, not just at the result, but at how well he's played and how bad he's made that defense look at times. A red card challenge, you reckon? It's a good question. It's a question that the referee will have to answer. I think South Sudan is, uh, is showing a sign of giving up right now. And yeah, I think the, the, the frustrated sort of risky challenges are towards the end of the game. Exactly. And they're never a good sign of a team who are, are believing that they can come back and, and produce a miracle, is it? Yeah. I mean, they've tried. That's all we can say now. Well, hope Chol Gabriel will be okay. Likely will play no further part in this fixture the way he's limping off now. 
being aided with by his teammates. Whether he still plays or not, he's done his duties already. Uh, so it honestly feels at this point, with the result looking like it's decided that I, I think the, the post-match festivities have, have already kicked off and in many respects the game is, has taken a sort of second fiddle role to what is now happening off the stands and it is uh, jubilant scenes of, of glorious emotion underneath the Ralph Reserve grandstand. We can say the party have already started. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> An early party before the game, <laughs> before the final whistle. Uh, for the game, and we said no music during the game, but I think the game <laughs> might be over, so the music has started. And the party has too. That's the sign of a good DJ. They know when to bring the music in, and they know when to bring it up, and bring it down. And I think he's picked the right moment. Party is happening in the stands, as you can see. Right outside our commentary box, the DJ booth, the line of dancers. Finally, as action gets back underway on the field. Forward, Masquay trying to edge out a player. Boltong wants to get out. South Sudan have the ball on the broadcast side. Played inside to... He's lost out here. Ball's poked forward. A chance. Good save from Agwek in the South Sudan goals. There's a substitute, John Maniok, who had that glorious opportunity to make it five. Probably won't matter at this stage, but he'll be ruining that. Shirt pull and South Sudan have a free kick. Launched forward, the path of Akuno. Again, the wind just not in his favour and straight into the turf. This guy, and Young, in no hurry to restart proceedings. And you can't blame him. I think he wants him to sink in every moment of this atmosphere while, while he still can. <laughs> I think we're almost saying the same from the commentary booth as well. The game at this point always circumspect to everything else happening around it. If you see the camera bouncing up and down, it's because the whole stadium is. Anyang for Kenya. Appeals for handball against Sabit James. And in fact, it was not Sabit James. But this is a sign of jubilation so far. <laughs> I'm God, Ar Arjak, who is penalised for that. Jubilation indeed. It feels like a group of people who have accidentally set their like New Year's Eve clock five minutes too early, and now they're all celebrating before the full-time whistle, before the New Year. <laughs> I've called it early, but I am not complaining. Great I scenes. mean, for Kenya last year, they crashed in the semi-final, and... Uh, they played very well throughout the mm. tournament, and to see them in the this year make it to the final, that's amazing. It's a lot of progress for this young group of players, right? Yes, yes, a lot of progress. And I think we're going to see the same thing next year. So a new power has emerged in the African Nations Cup. Eritrea twice lifted the trophy, two years running. They were knocked out in the quarterfinals this year. Yes. It's a big surprise. It shows how deep this tournament is now as Pukoyo Manyang tries to chase down the loose ball. Expectant crowd wants goal number five. Manyang, great feat. 
Eventually it runs away from him. Still with Kenya. One way traffic. Pushed forward, controlled by Gabriel Chung. Hold up in the corner at the moment. Is this Sudan attack? As we see a, a mixture of lightning and flash photography happening underneath the ground. So it's hard to tell which is which, in all honesty. So it's flicked on by Maliat into the path of Apaya Kuno. He hasn't got a lot of support ahead of him, so he's forced to kind of track back and hold it up, and he's got it stuck between his legs, and he finds the opening. Either way, very impressive stuff. Back with Maliat, who just fell over and expecting to get the free kick in his favour, caught the ball, and, and good thing the referee didn't give the free kick, because otherwise it would have been going the other way. Taken quickly. And that might be a booking here for getting in the way of the restart. A formality at this point, but a potential consolation prize. Money Ping Deng launches that one, and uh, a sign of not a great free kick when you're Shockish. at a ground Shocking with the uh, retaining wall behind the goals. If it manages to go over that retaining wall, that is that is well wide. <laughs> that is well well wide. That is never a good sign, and and perhaps that surmises the uh, the frustration mm. and the pain felt by. By South Sudan, they've they've come <laughs> so many times in this tournament uh, into proceedings expecting to win, um, but it's never been done, done, done. Unfortunately for them, <laughs> falling this time at the final hurdle, and it looks as though Kenya will be. I mean, not this is championship, but yeah. first their first championship in this tournament. The Kuno once again moves forward. Back to Deng, a few nice little ball rolls, just runs out of room. He beat three defenders, couldn't get his way around the fourth. Good interception. Not yet. Plays it inside, two ball. Back with Deng, who's been everywhere in the last few minutes. A little cider is well wide. Still elicited a little half dive out of Guy Yan Young in the goals. And that is full oh. time. The referee blows the final whistle after a procession of the last 15 minutes. And Team Kenya are the African Nations Cup champions. And haven't they deserved it, Acho? They've deserved it. They've deserved it. They've worked hard for this, you know. Um, this, is, this is a great, 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 great victory for them. I mean, I mean look at them. Look at the young. Celebrating with their teammates and now celebrating with the fans. Kenya 4, South Sudan nil. It was emphatic. I think the picture tells the story, Josh. Show the picture tells the story. Oh man, the party goes on tonight. <laughs> that will be the tell of the year. <laughs> Got the Kenyan flag out. And one more Ronaldo celebration for posterity. <laughs> Kenya's trademark. As they sign off in style. A fantastic match once again. A fantastic tournament every year. And we're just so lucky to be here to witness it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for letting us bring this event to life this year. And bring it live to you on FNR Football Nation Radio and on the Football Empowerment page. I've been Josh Parrish alongside Lockie Flanagan. Lockie, your final thoughts? Deserved winners. They, I think it's fair to say that Kenya have been the best team all tournament, and I mean team in the true sense of the word. Mm. They've played like a polished collective all throughout, and they picked their moments in this game time and again. You know, they got the lead in the first half and got those goals when they needed to in the second half. Weathered the storm that South Sudan brought early on into the second 45, and I don't think anyone can argue, not even the most ardent supporter of South Sudan, that Kenya are deserved leaders and will celebrate long in tonight on what's been a great day of football here at Ralph Reserve. Achol, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you, Josh. It's thank been an absolute pleasure. Me. And it must be 
amazing for you to see the progress that these players have made to win this trophy in I'm a not, very I'm, competitive field. I'm not going to lie, Josh. This is uh, a sign of happiness to me, you know. Uh, I've seen them cry last year, and this year to see them just lifting the cup and everything like that. Look at the happiness. Yeah. Well, if there are any tears for Kenya, there will be tears of happiness exactly. as they will celebrate long into the night. We'll sign off, but we'll leave you with the visuals of these incredible celebrations. Thanks for watching. How good is this? This is the power of football. The final score at Ralph Reserve. South Sudan 1, Kenya 4.
And your champion for 2020 to the African Cup, Melvin T. Kenya! And the African Cup Kenya for the South Sudan run today, back to North South Sudan!
appreciation award goes to Sergeant Jonathan Porter McDonald. to the Rising Star Award. <laughs> Presenting the award is Kamal Ibrahim. <laughs> can we get, uh, can we get Neil, Neil Connell from Liberia please come up. Make some noise, make some noise, the young star here. Next award goes to Coach of the Year, and this year. It was a scary tackle in the end, but he's up. So let's make some noise for him walking. like a clean sweep for Kenya, the best player of the tournament, MVP, 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 goes to Bo Carlos, MVP, 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 MVP. Kenya sweeping the awards tonight. Coach of the year, top goal scorer to Joel Gabriel and player of the tournament to Boltong. South Sudan picked themselves up. Pick up their spirits to collect their medals. They've had a fantastic tournament. What went wrong for them on the day, but what a team, what talent in that squad. And what a ride it's been following South Sudan.
And as the champions come through to collect their medals, there's one figure shifting eagerly on his toes, waiting to be presented with the African Nations Cup, Melbourne. The captain of Kenya. Koyu Manyang takes the microphone, exhausted and embattled after a brilliant performance. He accepts the adulation of the crowd with the Kenyan flag behind him. Here's the moment they've been waiting for. Your 
2022 African Nations Cup champions. Okoyo Manyang accepts the trophy. The champions of the 2022 African Nations Cup are Kenya. Every member will get to lift the cup. The celebrations will continue long into the night. But well, we'll leave you with these scenes. Kenya are the champions. <laughs>